Good positive too. How's it going everybody? Now wait, wait, before you guys close the video, please hear me out for the next minute or two and then you can decide if you would like to leave. Now, uh, first off, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys right now. I just narrated this. I had this opened up on Camtasia, ready to edit, and then render. You know what happens? My power gets cut off. And the file for this narration gets corrupt. So I'm having to redo it. And I'm just hoping that this time the narration will be maybe better than the first one. Or it'll be as good as the first one. So I would greatly appreciate it if you guys would please hit that like button if you do enjoy this battle. And this battle was actually a really, really good battle. It definitely came down to the wire. And I'm definitely positive that you guys are going to enjoy it. So make sure to stick around for the whole thing. Uh, another thing is that originally I did want to get up a Wi-Fi battle today. Unfortunately, certain circumstances kind of prevented me from doing that. But tomorrow, Friday, I promise you 100%, I will get a Wi-Fi battle up for you guys. And then hopefully after that, I can maybe start doing more Wi-Fi battle uploads. Because I really have been wanting to upload Wi-Fi more. And this also gives me a chance to battle you guys. So feel free to follow me on Twitter if you want to get battles with me. And... I believe that's all I really have to say uh, with everything that's not regarded to the video being said let's try to get 300 likes on this video guys so make sure to hit that like button if you do enjoy this now looking at team preview the team that I'm using is a team that are based around Swallow, Choice Specs Dragolgy, uh, Defog Makeshift Tree, Defensive Stumpfisk, Defensive Calm Mind Slurpuff and Assault Vest Hariyama to cover up the uh, major massive humongous ice weakness on my team now looking at my opponent's team which is bobby fresh for those of you who are active in the nu room on showdown you may know who bobby fresh is he goes under a, a bunch of different accounts like bobby fresh king bobby bobby wreck bobby stall all that shenanigans but you guys know of him and he has a cryogonal now if this is offensive cryogonal it is actually going to be a major major problem so Definitely the biggest threat I saw was going to be his Cryogono, although looking at his team, if this Omastar turns out to be a weakness armor, which I think it's called weakness armor, or it's weak armor, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, but basically what ability that Omastar normally carries is weak armor or weakness armor, which lowers its defense by one if it takes uh, physical hits, I believe. And then boost this speed by one alongside the minus one defense drop, which means my swallow should actually be able to two hit KO him with facade. So Omastar honestly shouldn't be a problem unless and unless he does turn out to be a uh, shell smash without weakness armor. But mostly from what I've seen, Omastar are lead Omastar. So going into the battle, I actually thought he would lead off with Omastar, but I'll get into that later. And then. Looking at the rest of his team, once I get rid of Rhydon or a weakened Rhydon enough, Swallow honestly just destroys his entire team, especially if this uh, Spirit Tomb does not carry Sucker Punch. And from what I've seen, most Spirit Tombs are Crow Tomb, which are max defense, max HP with Calm Mind, uh, Rest, Sleep Talk, and Dark Pulse or Shadow Ball on occasion. And then Vile Plume unfortunately does completely stop my Hariyama. Which is my only check to his Magmortar and to his Cryogonal. Then again, if he doesn't have Earthquake, my Jargology actually should be able to live any two hits from that Magmortar. So I shouldn't be too worried about it. But going into this battle, I knew that I definitely have to keep Hariyama around to prevent that Cryogonal from possibly destroying my whole team. And once I get rid of Rhydon and this Omastar, Swallow would definitely be putting in a lot of work so with that being said guys let's get into this awesome awesome battle so he's going to be leading off with the vile plume as i'm going to be leading off with my hariyama now right off the bat i do predict him to switch directly into spirit tomb thinking that i would maybe want to go for a fake out as i'm able to knock off his leftovers i'm going to switch into my jargology thinking that he would go for a calm mind but he actually ends up going for the foul play now the fact that he has foul play automatically tells me okay he's not crow tomb and he could possibly maybe be carrying sucker punch so I have to scout out for that. And then as I got a free switch into my Jargology, I knew that I was able to just freely fire off a modest choice specs Draco Meteor. As he switches into Cryogonal, Cryogonal only takes 69% from that. So seeing how little damage that Draco Meteor did and seeing that he has leftovers, he is definitely a specially defensive Cryogonal, which is kind of good and bad. It's good because now I'm not as worried about it. It's bad because he has to switch into my Dragology, which I thought Dragology 
and Swolo were just going to destroy his team. So seeing that he is at low HP, I'm going to make a bit of a risky play and predict him to go for the recover because then again, he is forced to go for the recover. So I wouldn't call switching in Swolo on Cryogonal this turn risky now that I think about it because their uh, recover was so, so obvious. So he does end up going for the recover and I'm basically able to get my Toxic Orb activated and now I'm in a position where I can go for Facade, Brave Bird, or U-Turn and ultimately I decide just to go for the U-Turn because it is definitely going to be my better play as I U-Turn out on the incoming ride on, I U-Turn into my Shift Tree and this turn right here, this was the most frustrating turn in this battle. So I was in call late night with Richard when I had this battle. And Richard had gone off to do something, and I sat here for a good maybe 60 seconds thinking, okay, 50-50, Leaf Storm or Knock Off. Thought about it some more, 60% Leaf Storm, 40% Knock Off. Thought about it more, and I was like, okay, 70% Leaf Storm, 30% Knock Off. Because the fact that I want to go for the Grass-type move is so obvious that he could possibly switch into Vile Plume, predicting that... Or he could stay in thinking that I'll predict him to switch out free in the grass type move and stay in. And then I can Oko him with Leaf Storm. Allow me to get rid of the one major check counter to my Swallow. And then that opens up so many holes for my Swallow to come in and basically most likely get a kill every free switch in that I get. So Richard comes back and right before as I'm about to click Leaf Storm, I'm like, wait. I'm going to ask Richard. I'm going to ask Richard what he would do in this situation you know what richard said richard said oh you can go for knockoff man he, he can't afford to lose ride on and you know what he does he stays in just as i predicted and then i oh i listened to richard and i lose my shift tree if i had kept what i wanted to do in the first place was just go for leaf storm i would have been able to keep my shift tree around for this battle for sucker punch and gotten rid of that damn ride on so as he knocks me out, I bring in Hariyama, I go for Fake Out as he brings in Spirit Tomb, I then switch into my Dragology, predicting him to go for the Will-O-Wisp as he doubles into Cryogonal. This is another um, important turn. I apologize that I'm pausing so much, but it's just that this is going a little bit too fast and it's already a normal and I don't want to make it slow and then just not like really know what to say when I get to the end of me saying something. But basically what I wanted to do this turn was actually stay in and go for the Sludge Bomb because after I thought about it, I thought, well, with him being a defensive Cryogonal, I can definitely live one freeze dry, right? And I do have a 30% chance to poison with a sludge bomb. Plus, there is a good possibility that he would want to switch into Vile Plume, predicting me to switch into my Hariyama, which me switching into Hariyama is actually very, very obvious because, well, Hariyama is the only thing on my team that takes on Cryogonal effectively. And after thinking about it, I was like, well, I'm still just going to stay in a sludge bomb, right? And you know what happens? He goes for the freeze dry and I get frozen. Uh, to be perfectly honest, in the long run, the freeze most likely does not matter whatsoever. So I really wasn't too upset about it once I thought about it. And he's able to knock me out as I can now get a free switch back into my solo. If I had just gone for the leaf storm, uh, solo would possibly just be getting rid of this almost star and then destroying the rest of his team. So I decided to go just straight for the facade because really I lose nothing in doing it and I'm very positive that he's not going to bring in the spirit tomb. So he brings in the Omastar. Unfortunately, Omastar does not have weak armor, which means his defense is not going to get lowered. So I'm going to be forced to go for the U-turn as opposed to staying in and going for another facade and possibly knocking him out. As he turns out to go straight for the Shell Smash, I thought this was a bit of a questionable play because I was very confident in the fact that a combination of Fake Out and Bullet Punch would be enough to knock out this Omastar. Unfortunately, Omastar does have a massive, massive defense stat, so he's able to live on 5% and get off a solid amount of damage on my Spirit, uh, not my Spirit Tomb, but on my Hariyama. As he brings in the Spirit Tomb, I make another just absolutely terrible terrible play so i honestly did not fully think out this play right here because as i said i had this battle late at night so i am kind of tired and I, I should really stop battling late at night because i noticed that i make a lot of bad misplays like this one so i thought that he was going to go for the foul play predicting me to switch into my swallow predicting him to go for the will-o-wisp when there was literally absolutely no reason for me to do that because me switching spirit tomb i mean me switching in swallow on spirit tomb 
is entirely way too risky for me to do. And he knows this. So he literally had no reason to not just go for Will-O-Wisp. And I probably actually should have switched into Swallow. Then hard switched right into my Slurpuff. Because I wouldn't have been able to keep my Spirit Tomb. But no, like a complete idiot. I stay in and I go for knockoff. Expecting to take a foul play. And he's able to burn me with the Will-O-Wisp. Which means my Hariyama is basically useless at this point. And that also means Cryogono has actually become, has become kind of a big big problem now as i'm just gonna try to get off as much damage as i can on this vile plume before he knocks me out i guess he went for the giga drain on the off chance that i switched in the swallow so he could get off that extra little bit of chip damage so i'm gonna go straight for the brave bird actually expecting him to bring in the spirit tomb but he brings in the rhydon now judging for how much damage brave bird did i was confident that facade would actually be able to knock him out now after the battle i did run some damage calcs and depending on his ev spread would have determined whether or not the crit mattered or it didn't matter so unless i know his ev spread i can't really be the judge on whether that crit mattered or it didn't matter as he brings in the spirit tomb the way he brought it in i'm very confident that he has sucker punch so i switched directly into my slurpuff thinking that after one calm mind I should be able to get a second one up as he switches out and then I can hopefully just start boosting up from there and maybe even win the battle with Slurpuff at this point. So he switches into the Vile Plume. Unfortunately, I make another very stupid, stupid play and I go straight for the Flamethrower when I honestly should have gone for the Calm Mind and then rested the following turn because I would have been at plus three special defense and a plus three special attack and I would have been at a higher amount of HP than I would be right now as he goes for the Sludge Bomb. Which means I would have had an easier time taking on that Magmort. Unfortunately, that's just a play I didn't really fully think out. And I can't really do anything about it now. As he brings in the Magmortar, I'm expecting to take any move that he wants to go for really, really well. Because Slurpuff does have some very, very good bulk. But that Fire Blast, with me being at plus 2 defense and max HP, does way, way too much damage. So, I was thinking that he most likely is a Choice Specs. And here... What I should have done this turn was actually switched into my Stumpfisk as Death Fodder. I'm actually, I'm really going to break down this turn. I'm going to like explain all the possible situations that would have happened if I did actually switch out. So what I could have done was switched into my Stumpfisk as Death Fodder, allow me to bring in my Swallow, click Brave Bird, knock out this Magmortar. Then as he brought in Spirit Tomb, I could have brought in Slurpuff, set up more... Uh, set up on Spirit Tomb once more and then won the game with Slurpuff. Uh, another case scenario that would have happened was after I lose Stumpfisk, I bring in Swallow, he fodders off, he fodders off Cryogonal, he brings in Spirit Tomb, I'm forced to bring in Slurpuff. As I call mine, he brings in Magmortar and then he knocks out Slurpuff, I'm forced to bring in Swallow, knock out Magmortar, and he wins the game with Spirit Tomb. So it really came down to like what exactly would happen if I did switch out this turn. And I did actually switch out after I clicked Draining Kiss. Then I went to Cancel and Switch. Unfortunately, as we all know, the Cancel button on Showdown does not like to work. So basically, I quote-unquote stay in in Draining Kiss. And after I'm brought down to 20% HP, there's really no more use for my Slurpuff. So I bring in Swallow. I go straight for the Brave Bird thinking, all right, I've lost this battle. There's absolutely no hope for me whatsoever. As I knock out the Magmortar, he brings in the Spirit Tomb, obviously predicting him to go for the Sucker Punch. I'm going to switch into my Stumpfist, but he makes what I would say is a really, really ballsy play. And he goes for the Foul Play, not the Sucker Punch, either that or he did predict me to bring in Stumpfist. Which I mean, switching into Stumpfist was kind of obvious, but here he makes his own very, very bad and terrible play. Instead of switching into Cryogonal to knock out my Stumpfisk, then forcing me to bring in Swallow, knock out Cryogonal, then win the game with Sucker Punch with Spiritomb, he's actually going to leave in Spiritomb on my Stumpfisk until I knock him out with a combination of Discharge and Toxic, which means I'm basically going to win the battle now because I easily outspeed this Cryogonal. So once he knocks out my Stumpfisk, I bring in Swallow and I win. So, I guess in the end, everything kind of played out how it should have because I think I should have, or I most likely would have won the battle if I had actually switched out my 
Slurpuff or if the cancel went through and my switch went through Because then at that point it would have just came down to like what exactly would have panned out and like what predictions were gonna be made and I can honestly just stay here and just like tell you guys like all the different case scenarios that would have happened if I did do this and if he did do this or I didn't do this and he didn't do this and just in the end because of his huge misplay I was able to still pull out the victory even though I made a huge misplay and in the end it definitely turned out to be a really really good battle so I really hope you guys did enjoy this game and if you did then make sure to hit that like button guys the support is greatly greatly appreciated and as I said anytime that I do upload a showdown replay that's post narrated just assume that it is a very good game because I'm not gonna upload any random old showdown replay and yeah with that being said guys I believe that is all I have to say I know I've said that twice in one sentence and I really just hope that uh, my power doesn't go out again and this goes through and that y'all really did enjoy this and yeah I apologize I'm just rambling later everybody I'll see y'all tomorrow with the Wi-Fi battle so be on the lookout for that